Hello. Uh, welcome to anybody who's watching this later on, because nobody's watching it live right now, I don't think. At least they're not saying anything in the chat, so. Um, yes. Welcome to some live coding session. Um, and I guess minor production notes. Um, I have new toys to play with. Um, bought myself a nice wireless uh, microphone the other day, uh, which has, let me see if I can grab the other thing. So wirelessly talks to that, which is plugged into my computer. Uh, and so maybe that's going to uh, kind of all part of my grand plan to see if I can make myself a bit more mobile. Um, dear. Top quality start to the uh, to the live coding. Well, I guess this is just showing the, the level of quality of uh, <coughs> production that's going to go on. So, yeah, there we go. Um, hello, I'm Adrian McEwen. If you don't know who I am, although having stumbled upon this by accident is going to be a bit interesting if you don't know who I am. But anyway, that's cool. Uh, welcome along. Um, <clears throat> so today what I'm going to play around with is um, some 15 minute city stuff. Um, so let me, I'm going to see also if I can remember to post things into the chat a bit more often. Um, so let's see, today we're exploring the 15minutecity.mcqn.com website. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the idea that um, you might want to be able to find, uh, the 15 minute city concept is like a thing that Paris I think is pushing forward with the most. Carlos Morenos um, is the main main person behind all this sort of stuff I think. Uh, and it's the idea that all of your daily needs um, should ideally be within a 15 minute walk or bike ride of wherever you happen to live. And that seems kind of a cool, interesting way of looking at the city from a sort of walkability and um, active mobility sort of a perspective. Um, so I've been exploring it with um, what this might mean for Liverpool, um, which is where I'm based. So <clears throat> I've been just slowly chipping away at it um, as a kind of exploration and kind of taking open street map and open trip planner um, which are some nice kind of bits of open source uh, mapping software which will let me um, explore kind of you know what's it what the city looks like so you can draw isochrones um, maybe if I flip to the desktop view for a moment you can see I've loaded the 15 minute city.mcqn.com um, and if I just drag it up a bit you can see kind of uh, this is the city centre of Liverpool um, if I zoom out a bit I suppose you might see a bit more of what kind of Liverpool looks like depends whether you know well, you know there's the River Mersey uh, and the River Dee uh, so yeah it's it's kind of exploring this and a bunch of different um, isochrones so these little kind of blobs are um, 15 minutes kind of reduce mobility and walking. I haven't got the cycling ones shown at the moment. Um, and I'm also getting to see that this is not a great uh, map because it doesn't manage to show all of the cycling ones, which are, there should be a whole bunch of, <clears throat> or there are a whole bunch if I like make the browser a bit bigger. Um, and maybe not kill all this one. Uh, and then it's probably scrolled off screen for you because of how I've got things set up and dragged around. So if I drag it over here, uh, you can see there is a cycling one. So I can do the city centre cycling isochrone. And that's drawn a kind of blue um, uh, kind of isochrone onto onto this. Uh, as well as the city centre, so there's the kind of, if I toggle this on and off now, there's the, like, how far you can get. 50 minutes walk from the centre, which I think is St George's Hall, I picked as the centre of the city centre. Um, <clears throat> reduced mobility is kind of thinking about um, how far people who are in wheelchairs or maybe have, um, you know, walk with the aid of a stick or something like that can, can get. Um, and then the cycling one is obviously if you've got a bike, you can get a lot further. Um, and then these things start to overlap. Um, with different areas, so um, I'm just trying to remember my areas of Liverpool now. Um, but that's uh, yeah, that so that, that was Everton, and that's 
Vauxhall, um, and so they kind of you know they cross over and, and stuff, and and it's just a way to explore the city and to look at it in different ways. Um, so the other thing that I have, if I open a new tab and go to GitHub slash Liverpool, so <clears throat> um, like a few years ago, I created a GitHub account for the city because like why not? Um, it would be an interesting thing to explore. Uh, and to look at and there is a 15 minute city repository so all of this stuff that I've been doing is all um, open source um, and I can't remember what the security vulnerability is before I need to look at that at some point um, and yeah this is the source code <coughs> for the website that, um, that we were just looking at and it's uh, it's built on a kind of combination that's it's using Jekyll, which is a Ruby static site generator, uh, to to kind of generate the main um, the main website, and then all the mapping stuff is done with a JavaScript uh, sort of toolkit called Leaflet, so that <clears throat> can load in the tiles from um, Open Cycle Map and or Open Street Map. You know, various different places we're using Open cycle map at the moment um, and can then draw the um, the sort of areas those isochrones um, on top of it so <clears throat> so yes yeah, so this is the um, yeah where all the source code is and so what I will be doing today is going to be looking at one of the issues and one of the things that I'm really interested in like uh, the the sort of distances you can get um, is is like is really interesting. I, I need to yeah. You know, there are a bunch of gaps in here, and this isn't because like um, basically I suppose the final bit of um, introductory background info. Um, the the different areas are all kind of neighbourhoods of the city. Um, so there's this yeah I suppose massive list of um, of different areas of the city we're looking at and it, uh, the original list was from um, Liverpool Architectural Society did some stuff a few years back now um, to to look into or to kind of split the city up into different areas and so I <clears throat> figured that would be a good enough starting point uh, just to give me a bunch of areas to then kind of think about okay if this is this is a sort of a an area of the city that people know about. So if you're talking about where people are from or something, you maybe say like, you know, I'm from Everton or like I'm from Toxteth. I mean, I'm not from Toxteth originally, but I live in Toxteth now. Um, and, um, and, and that sort of thing. And they often have a sort of defined center point. And there's, you know, some, also some discussion and, and argument and debate amongst the locals as to where, uh, where the center of these places are. Um, so, the ones we have at the moment are ones that I've been able to define um, a centre point for. Um, there's a whole bunch where there's data missing. Uh, so if yeah, if you're a, a local and you're watching this, um, then definitely tell me. And you know where, or you have an opinion. <laughs> I suppose you don't necessarily need to know where it is. You need to have an opinion on where it is, because uh, often that's the thing that we end up um, discussing in the. Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, as part of this, it's like it's having conversations with my fellow scousers to to work out where where different places are. And there was some discussion like Clubmore isn't really on it yet, but that's partly because there wasn't really any difference between Clubmore and Norris Green when I was chatting to um, one of the local or the former local councillor for Clubmore and Norris Green and stuff. So, like, yeah, it's it reinforces my prejudice that Clubmore doesn't really exist um, and actually recently I've been cycling through a few bits where I'm like okay maybe this is the centre of Clubmore um, but from my kind of perspective of, of uh, coming into the city because I grew up kind of just off screen uh, on the map sort of in Rainford uh, and so we'd come in down these lanks and then th sort of through Tubebrook and stuff and so we'd come through the middle of what claims to be Cl Clubmore um, and that was somewhere I'd never ever heard of like I could, you know, Norris Green and Croxteth and West Derby and, yeah, Tubrook, um, and, yeah, which is either Tubrook or Tubrook, depending on whether you're, uh, like, on, on exactly what part of, you know, 
where your Scouse accent comes from, uh, but um, into the town. So yeah, Clubmore seemed like this non-existent place um, that was just on kind of councillors. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to believe there might be there might be another place. But that's why yeah, you want to get locals to be able to go. Yeah, no, this is this is where the centre is, uh, and so all of these gaps are mostly because I haven't found some locals yet to kind of properly discuss and work out like, you know, where's like this sort of big obvious ones here, sort of Kensington and and Edge Hill. And I sort of know where these areas are. Like if somebody says they're from Kensington um, or Kenny or whatever, then, <clears throat> then I know where they mean. Um, but I don't know where I'd put as the centre. Um, and I could obviously go in and pick like ward boundaries and stuff, but it's much more interesting and fun to to have these discussions with the, the people who live there um, as to where they think is the centre. And it's all they're all just like points in a JSON file that gets it all gets generated when the Jekyll you know, site gets built. So moving them, adding them, like is all pretty trivial, um, which is how we've ended up with a few up in the north because um, uh, there was some discussion from like people living up that way because um, I'd initially just picked these um, 32 the Liverpool Architectural Society picked which yeah only goes as far as Bootle out to the north and like it doesn't have Croxteth or Stockbridge Village and you know you then get into discussions about where the limits of the city are and things like that um, uh, but um, yeah it doesn't have Aintree like the, and there are bits that you'd definitely say are, are part of Liverpool um, uh, <clears throat> and so we can always just extend it and add more sites in so we've got yeah uh, Waterloo and um, I'm trying to think where the one just up north of Bootle is. Yeah, I can't remember. Huh? See, this is why you need locals to discuss these things because they can tell you where places are. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, that's the kind of that's what the site is, and so the the distance you can you can get to is kind of interesting. But then the other part of that is like what can you get to within those so it's like it's interesting to look and go okay well from um the center of of west derby this is how far you can get walking and and cycling and what have you um but but what's in that area i mean if we zoom in so yes given that i picked west derby uh, let's zoom in a bit and let me zoom out a tiny bit there so this is West Derby. Let's get rid of the cycling thing from Norris Green. That I'm accidentally for old one, sorry, that I accidentally kind of dragged onto it. So this is where you can get to like St Mary's Church is in the middle here. Um and you can see some things with the um with the open cycle map view. Um pick the cycle map so that it emphasizes sort of cycle friendly features over car friendly features. So whilst Queen's Drive, this you know, big dual carriageway ring road is is pretty prominent it's not super prominent because you're not really going to want to cycle on it you can cycle on it but it's not a nice road to cycle along um and so you know equally important or visible on this map as queen's drive are um, this red line here which is the loop line which is the old railway um, which doesn't have any tracks anymore and is now a cycle path uh, and this is national cycle network route 62 so yeah you can see that the the cycle main cycle path is quite prominent and then similarly this O is one of the Liverpool um, kind of regional cycle networks um, so that's yes route O which is is not too bad to cycle along it's definitely much better than Queen's Drive um, M this the one that also kind of tracks yeah M and O both sort of mostly track Queen's Drive um, but a bit inside you know, near the city centre and a bit further away from the city centre and an M is a really nice cycle route. It's you know it's mostly residential roads. Obviously, you cross major roads more um, in certain points, but uh, but yeah, you can get kind of all the way from Walton down to Old Swan without getting on any kind of major roads at all. It's it's a nice cycle route. Um, o is is not quite as good. I, I cycle it lots though. Um, <clears throat> so you can see you get to see some stuff by just using the standard map tile sets um, and you can start to pick out some of the features like the fact that there's um, uh, Croxton Park which is like a you know, big it's the old um, there's a big stately home or former stately home there 
and that's really nice big park for that part of the city um, and there are other bits of, of greenery around um, and you start to see like if I turn off the um, isochrones for a second so you can just see the, um, the kind of general area I mean a lot of West Derby is residential so that's what this kind of sort of greyish stuff is uh, and there are some schools and things um, but it's not really obvious what the different sorts of uses I mean if, if you're thinking about your um, everyday needs then like yes you'll need somewhere to live um, you'll need you know parks and things to go and, and get out to get some sort of you know greenery and and get away from from city life as it were um, or just you know take some exercise that kind of thing uh, but you'll also want some you know amenities you'd want to know like you'd you know like a um, community centers or libraries or things like that um, you'd want some shops um, and there are some shops along um, town row here in the in the center of the village of West Derby village um, and there are a couple up this way as well if I remember rightly uh, but they're not really visible here you can't see you can't look at that and go oh yeah there's there's a bunch of shops there um, and you know and a a couple of pubs and and things like that um, and you'd also want somewhere to work probably so you'd want um, um, like depending on what kind of job you I mean obviously some people uh, work in retail so they'll work in the shops but the other people who'd work in offices uh, you'd want kind of you know the traditional white collar blue collar kind of distinctions um, you'd, you'd want to think about where the places that that anybody can work because you want to provide all the sort of amenities for for all of the people who live in that part of town um, and so the, yeah there is a a little kind of MOT center and tire place I think it's West Derby tires or something which is just over there um, and I don't know what there is in the way of office blocks and stuff there's a try to think now just when you get across there somewhere along here there's a kind of post office sorting office type sort of thing um so yeah there's there is this sort of stuff hit like in the in the map you know, in the in the location uh, but it's not shown on the map um and open street map will probably have a load of that data lying around it's just that this visualization you know if you're a cyclist you're not that bothered about what it is just like you know i mean you want to know where shops and things are on, on some level but but you won't necessarily need to know where the local sorting offices in a way that's kind of prominent um so <clears throat> so yeah i've got the isochrones to show kind of where you can get to um but it would also be nice i think to try and show um what sorts of the kind of broad classes of amenities are um in the city and so that is this issue number 13 so um actually let me just cut and paste um, yeah, the source code and issue list just is, is there, post that into the chat so that um, anybody else who happens to be watching or wanting to kind of check this out later can maybe find it a bit more easily than trying to type stuff from what I'm showing on the screen, I like, uh, yeah, don't know we'll see if that's a bit better when I watch the video back afterwards uh, and and if, if yeah if anybody is watching then feel free to dive into the chat if you want to kind of get properly involved and start playing around with things as well then uh, go and join the, the big blue button um, which is in my original uh, tweet and Mastodon post about it uh, and you can kind of join the join the stream um, and say hello to everybody else uh, but but yeah, if you want to just yeah, feel free to feel free to say hello if you're watching. Um, and so yeah, this is issue 13 is what I'm going to work on today. Um, and actually, maybe if I make the text a bit bigger, maybe not quite that big, but uh, and maybe if I go back to having this resized properly so that it'll fit on screen and you can all see all of it. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
So yeah, as I've just been discussing, it's kind of useful to have different tile usage and things like that. And one of the benefits of OpenStreetMap is that it is just a big database of geographic information. Um, and there are different ways of, of looking at it. So you can do, um, and there are a whole bunch of different uh, views already at the moment. I don't think I've got, have I got layers? Uh, if I remember how to scroll things rather than zoom. Yeah, I don't think I have the layers gadget. I don't have the layers gadget turned on by default. Let me find West Derby again, just so we can see what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, if we go to OpenStreetMap, the main OpenStreetMap website, this is the same data. Um, actually, if we search for West Derby, um, then we can go and find kind of roughly the same view. And actually, this is uh, okay. I've still this is open open cycle map. I'm trying to remember what the cycle OSM. That's the tile set. There's an open cycle map as well. Um, and if I choose layers, I can pick. And so that's the standard view where you can see that Queen's Drive is super prominent and the loop line and the kind of uh, cycle routes are much less dis or you know, non-existent um, because everything's all about cars in the standard map. Uh, there's a transport map, which is more about bus routes and railways. Um, and they're more prominent. Uh, I don't know what the, humani uh, the humanitarian one isn't really loading very well, the tile sets. I don't know what OPN, that looks more transporty. But um, but yeah, as you can see, it's all the same data underneath. And these are just different tile sets, which are um, showing, showing different features and making things more or less prominent. Um, and so because all this is open, it means that we can create our own uh, tile set. <clears throat> and so this is something that I haven't done, but I, I mean, kind of part way through. So where I got to, as you can kind of see, in, and there's this, as I refresh my own memory as to where, quite where we got to, um, I figured starting with the Cycle OSM um, tile set was good, a good starting point because A, it's going to be cycling focused, which is the kind of, you know, the the fastest transport option that the the fifteen minute city is is kind of thinking about. Uh, two, it's it's an open, um, open data, open source tile set, so all of the source code is available for it, and there are instructions on how to install it and build it and use it, uh, which is very useful because that's what. Uh, I'm going to need to do. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, back in July, I set a bunch of stuff up to um, to get things up and running, um, and made some notes about what I did at the time, so that I could get things uh, working. And then August was the last time I did any kind of real work on this, uh, which I think was the first. The first live coding session that I did. So if you look back through the um, videos uh, here on the on the McEwen, um YouTube channel, you should find the live coding I did in at the start of August, which was getting it up and running. And yes, this is me making notes, which is very good because I you know it's like the end of September now, so it's been almost getting on for two months since I last touched on any of this. So I can't really remember what I was doing to get it up and running properly last time. So I did get it all installed and and I'm building. So this uh, photo or screenshot here is a screen grab of the um, tile, tile server, which lets you do different styling things and experiment with your different, um, like how you want your, your tiles um, and maps to look. Uh, but yes, there's a bit of getting that up and running which um, obviously <clears throat> I couldn't, you know, was one of the things I worked out in August and handily I made some notes of um, of what I did so that I can log in and do this again. So that's gonna be a good starting point. Let's get, um, 
so that we can do all this sort of stuff and let's make the text a bit bigger maybe not quite that big there we go right okay and then I need to remember uh, um, yeah so I need to SSH into the 15 minute city let me see yep <coughs> there we go so this is my um, VPS that's running the software this is where the 15 minute city site gets served from uh, it's also running an instance of open trip planner because that's what generates the isochrome things that get shown on the on the site and then just because it was a you know it's a server I'm experimenting like a whole system I'm experimenting with really so it doesn't massively matter um, I've also installed the um, cyclo SM uh, I can't what's the name of the software uh, Cosmetic, I think is what's actually generating and letting me edit and experiment with the different tile stuff. So CD into Cyclosm, blah, blah, blah. Surprised I need to do an MVM install, but uh, that's, yeah, that's using, that's node. Uh, I can't remember what the MVM stands for now, but yeah, that sets up which version of node it's going to use when I run some stuff and then I can just uh, run this um, and that is hopefully going to go off and do some stuff and it's going to complain it hasn't found a file but I think it's all right and then yeah if I remember right this goes off and takes a little while to build some stuff which is good because that will remind me what I need to then go to aha Okay, I need to create an SSH tunnel on port 6789 to be able to access it. So uh, let's control C from that and exit from that. And we'll create a, what was it, port 6789. So 6789. So this is going, basically SSH is giving me a remote session into the server that's running up in the cloud. Um, and because the Cosmetic stuff is some software that shouldn't really, like it, it isn't the sort of thing you're going to want to let anybody just kind of happen upon and play around with, but because it's a server running in the cloud, it, it so it doesn't expose this port to connect to, um, to just all and sundry, and so it was a really quick and dirty way of, of getting access to it. Um, when I'm wanting to use it, because I, I should be able to get access to it, uh, I basically create a little tunnel alongside my SSH session out to the server. So this is going to create a, um, yeah, <clears throat> log me into the server and then alongside the kind of connection that it's created for this, for this terminal session that I can type things in, it's also created another connection on port 6789, uh, which will mean that I can then, um, let me just start this all off again. Uh, so whilst I'm chatting it's doing something useful uh, so then yeah when I've got um, Cosmetic running I can then load and go to localhost 6789 which is going to connect to my computer my laptop but actually because I set up this little tunnel the data is going to get squirted across the tunnel and pop out and connect to the um, localhost on the remote server so I should now be able to go to localhost 6789 and boom there we go so um, we can't see very much at the moment but it's still loading so I imagine this is just slow and yeah it's complained a lot about fonts that it doesn't know I'm not going to worry too much about the fonts at the moment um, as I say Oh, there we go we're starting to get some starting to get some tiles um which are just the kind of generic ones and if i remember rightly i've only got a subset of the openstreetmap database because the openstreetmap the entire world is a pretty big um, database as you might imagine and i particularly for this 15 minute city thing i only care about the uh, the liverpool section of it um and 
so I mean and whatever I end up developing will <clears throat> you'll then be able to use the same style sheet so you end up building a kind of Carto CSS if I remember rightly um, style sheet which just defines the different things like you know um, a road should be this color and this bold and and a field should be this color and you know all that kind of thing um, so obviously you can then take that data and apply it or take that style sheet and apply it to the data from anywhere so you could then if you wanted to build a tile set for the entire world um, using my kind of you know, style sheet um, as we can see there are a few little things visible from the distance that show in the northwest the extent of my um, data set that I've loaded in so if yeah like it wasn't just Liverpool I had in the end I think it was um, Liverpool and well yeah Liverpool, Lancashire, Great, Mers Great Manchester oh sorry it's not just Liverpool, Merseyside Lancashire, uh, Greater Manchester maybe Cheshire as well I can't remember now um, we'll maybe work out as I zoom in a bit more um, and yeah this is all a bit slow and clunky because behind the scenes this is drawing all of those um, like you know pulling data out of the database and working out with the style sheet what it needs to look like and rendering all of those tiles and so it should eventually catch up with us um, and maybe actually I should just zoom in a bit more because I don't really care about it catching up with us in bits of the um, system I can't see and whilst it's rendering that I will go back and edit this comment um, to stick um, that note um, at the start rather than at the end so that I don't do like next time I come in and, and want to get this all up and running um, I can do the SSH tunnel at the start rather than log in do all the stuff and then go oh I needed an SSH tunnel um, so let's update that comment just for to make things a bit easier for me next time uh, the one thing I have done since any real work on it is I came across this really nice um, blog post about how to choose good colour sets um, because obviously we're going to be picking uh, let's see is that that's still loading things so let's let's go back here so let's try and work out um, what sort of um, yeah what different uh, land uses are we interested in um, obviously there's you know, water, lakes, rivers, streams, seas, etc. Um, you know, they're probably going to be blue. Um, let's go with, although there was an interesting blog post I read recently that Laura James had shared um, about the some people doing some mapping with, with um, some... Uh, tribes in the in the Amazon, I think it was, um, and and they were kind of like, why is all this water always blue? Because like, we've got all these streams and rivers, and none of them are blue, uh, which is is quite true. I mean, like the the Mersey is sometimes blue when the sky is blue, and on a good day, I suppose, the Mersey's blue, but it also has a lot of silt and stuff in it that it washes out into the um, into the Irish Sea, and so lots of the time, yeah, the Mersey is kind of fairly muddy brown sort of colour so um, but you know it's it's for western consumption so um, everyone expects yeah water to be blue so the water will be blue uh, there will then be like parks fields etc um, so that's probably all going to be some form of green and we might do darker green for wooded areas maybe and Paler green for other stuff like that if we're going to get advanced. Um, that's still busy doing things. I think it's still busy thinking about things. Let's just see if it's. Yeah, it's. Um, let's maybe zoom out a little bit. Let's see if it's going to reload. 
try and get around a little. Um, yeah, right, let's leave that for a bit. Uh, what are the classes of land use are we interested in? There'll be residential. Um, so yeah, houses, flats. Um, and I'm not quite sure what the different things that will show up in OpenStreetMap are yet. Like we'll have to go and explore the data a little bit. But it would be useful. It's just gonna be useful to try and at least as a like a first stab um, work out like what general block areas. And I think maybe today yeah it would be really nice. If we've got like probably about another hour and twenty minutes. I'm kind of planning on doing sort of two hours of stuff. Um, we would maybe yeah like if we can get to a point where we can start to color broad. Like, yeah, you know, all the residential stuff is all uh, grey or something and all of the retail is purple or I don't know. Um, so, yeah, let's retail will be another another class. Um, then there'll be sort of amenities. So that would be like libraries, uh, council offices, so like one-stop shops and things like that, I imagine. I'm not sure about leisure centres because it feels like leisure centres is maybe something that would fall under the parks, but but I guess maybe for now, yeah, leisure leisure centres or gyms would we will class them as amenities. Um, I guess there's things like uh, galleries and museums would also come under amenities. Um, yeah. And yeah, and, and as with all this stuff, we can go back and add things to it later when we find out about stuff. Um, uh, like blue collar workplaces, um, for want of a kind of better classification of things. So that would be like warehouses, factories, um, sort of. Mechanics, uh, don't know what other sorts of, I mean, yeah, uh, actually hospitals probably comes under amenities, doesn't it? Um, and white collar workplaces, which would be offices, that's probably about it, isn't it? Like. White collar people don't work in anything but offices, do they? Uh, maybe if I hit the reload button, maybe that will do a better job of catching up with things. the sorts of use and things do we have for stuff yeah I don't know where churches come under a church is kind of where it feels like churches and places of worship are probably some level amenities like we might want to break them out separately in the future um I mean that's a pretty good start, isn't it? Um, for working out what getting some of that stuff shown. And now I'm trying to work out whether let me zoom out a bit.
Right, let's have a poke around some of this stuff. Data inspector, looks good. Help. Okay, so there's a bunch of shortcuts that we can use for things, which is nice. Um, I wonder what all the commands are. Yes, data inspector. Yeah, I definitely had it. Well, I suppose as you've seen from the screenshot, and we definitely got to a stage in the past when it was showing um, actual uh, map tiles. I do wonder whether um, that seems to have. I don't know. Is that crashed and reloaded or something? It seems a bit strange that it was opening stuff again. What happens if I hit reload? Is that going to work? Or maybe let's do a full reload the entire page. Um, what did we have when it first started up? Yeah, we got the loading map and map ready. That's still maybe loading. Let's um, see if I can <coughs> open a new terminal window. Um, server seems very heavily loaded it is just a kind of bargain basement um, you know bottom end of what DigitalOcean offer if I remember rightly so uh, yeah all this generating tiles could well be hammering it just a little bit get another connection into it is yeah not the greatest of uh, signs maybe what I need to do is is give this uh, make this a bit more beefy rather than trying to do everything on the server um, on the cheap but at the same time I don't want to spend an absolute fortune on on this resource that's yeah yeah sits around for months at a time without anybody really using it um, yeah, maybe I need to get to a point where I can just quickly spin up um, a new <coughs> a new instance of all of this, um, so that when I do want to go back and work on it, I can kind of pick up where I left off without having to pay for loads of services in between. Yeah, I'm sure there's ways of doing stuff like that. Okay, it's starting to do something, even if that is just find lots of... Um, find that lots of fonts don't exist. Have we managed? Yes, we have gotten in. Uh, let's see what's see what's running. Um, so, yeah, there's a reasonable amount of, of stuff available, although, yeah, Cosmetic is hammering the CPU, so um, that is, yeah, and there we go, there's a bunch of files that it has served um, so there we go uh, and it seems to be caching stuff a bit more now so it is hopefully going to be a bit better when we zoom in like we're definitely getting more than we like last time we were at this sort of zoom level we only had um, the little kind of green blobs to begin with and and now we've got yes yeah, so we have got Cheshire well, as well um, so yeah maybe we should have zoomed jumped into the zoom a bit greater more quickly so that 
we didn't end up generating a load of tiles in between that will um, uh, what you call it that will yeah not be viewed again like at the moment we, we're just going to zoom in all the way into Liverpool city centre I imagine um, and not really care about you know like it would be nice to see what stuff looked like in Lancaster but um, uh, don't care about it that much <laughs> uh, not at the moment anyway when we're still in the very early stages of things um, but uh, yeah as you can see it is it is getting better at generating these tiles um, let's see, a couple more and I think when we get to a sensible zoom level then um, sticking going back and editing that comment again and sticking a like go to this URL first uh, would be a good a good start just so that we don't have to spend loads of time generating tiles that we don't care about and waiting for the server to catch up which yeah like it's how many Postgres is the database that all of the um, yeah, OpenStreetMap data is in, and Cosmetic is obviously what the software that's pulling all that data out and rendering it. And yeah, so it's busy hammering the hammering the database, pulling lots of data out of it, doing stuff with it to generate some nice pictures to show to us um, when we eventually get in there. So I guess whilst it's doing all of this. I might go and find the um, documentation for Cosmetic because I don't really know what I'm doing with it once once we get there. Um, so this is the this is the software to generate the uh, the maps and stuff that were. We're running with um, usage, so we want to install some browsers. I hmm, wonder what kind of plugins there are. Don't really want to go and tax the server anymore to go and find out what list of plugins there are, but there probably are a bunch of plugins. Um, I wonder if there's a way of getting it to default. The probably is. Um, custom renderers. So, overpass place search. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so these are the plugins that saves me going in taxing my server anymore to find out what the plugins are. Uh, Overpass Turbo is a nice kind of way of querying the OpenStreetMap database. Um, actually there was a bit of playing around with Overpass Turbo in the second live coding video that I did uh, which was kind of, yeah, I don't know, last month or start of this month maybe. Um, <coughs> where again it was kind of map based as it happened but wasn't working on the 15 minute city stuff at all so uh, we there were a, a few of us like Bernadette and Jackie and I um, did a collaborative session where we made some maps to show all of the uh, benches and all of the bike parking um, well anywhere in the world we were looking at Liverpool mostly but because of the way that open the overpass turbo works um, we were able to build ones that would yeah, we'll go and show you that, pull that data out of the OpenStreetMap database anywhere, um, which is kind of nice. Let's see if that, yeah, that has managed to do a bit better. Let's go a bit further in. And yeah, let's wait. Wait for that to load. And then maybe we can take that as a, a good starting point for the future. Um, <clears throat> so back to having a look at, so it uses Carto to render the style. So we probably 
want to have a look at Carto, Carto CSS, right. So it's a bit like uh, CSS is cascading, cascading style sheets, which is what uh, websites use to style how they look. So when you want to pick and say that like a main heading should be red and kind of this size and use this font and um, things like that, that's yeah. CSS is what you use to to just make web pages look nice or or look terrible. Um, depends who's writing the CSS. Um, doesn't magically make you a designer but it's what designers use to move things around and style things nicely so that they look good so so this lets you filter map data and then it will let you generate things in the background and then eventually yeah I think what we'll do is um, we will once we've got a task that looks nice um, there was an export tiles wasn't the option of like plug-in available that I'm um, on for Cosmetic so I think that will generate a bunch of tiles which are all basically just square images um, of a fixed you know, the way that all of the mapping stuff works is that it just splits the whole area up into lots of little squares uh, and then <clears throat> can load those squares on the fly so as you drag the map around like when you drag the map across um, from one side it will just load new tiles kind of just off to the off screen and then they can get dragged in and it all looks like it's just one massive area that you're just kind of scrolling around but really um, behind the scenes the browser is just kind of like loading stuff just off screen so that when you move down it can move those things onto the screen and then it'll load the next tile and just keeps doing that <clears throat> so, so I suppose it's a bit like that um, that section in uh, <laughs> In is it the wrong trousers where um, Gromit is just laying track um, uh, uh, just before the train runs over it? It's like that kind of a thing, but with map tiles. Uh, so, what we'll do in the end is generate a whole bunch of uh, PNGs that are all these different squares, and then your web, browser, web server can just serve them all up so it doesn't have to generate them. You know, as you can see, it's reasonably slow when you're generating them on the fly, um, and you don't want to do that. So what you want to do instead is find all of the, you know, there'll be a square and that will just get saved as an image and then it's very quick and easy for the web server just to go, oh, you want that square? Yeah, here you go. Um, so that you kind of scroll and zoom and move it around. Uh, we all get to see that problem. Uh, no, it's doing a reasonably good job of, oh, there you go. You can see over here that we've, you know, like we've moved off the edge of the map because it, it's generating these dynamically so it's going off and drawing these so there we go yeah it's loaded that tile so you can see roughly what sort of size each of the squares are uh, let's zoom in a bit more on um, West Derby just because just because it's an area I cycle through quite a bit and so I know quite well so we can maybe start to do picking yeah some different styles and things for that uh, but yeah, before we go and start doing any editing things, let's just edit this um, jumping straight straight to um, we'll save so straight to that link. We'll save you generating loads of map tiles that you don't care about. Um, so yeah so next time hopefully that will be a little bit quicker and there won't be 20 minutes of waiting for Cosmetic to generate some map tiles that look nice so uh, we can remember the inspector so what happens if we don't show all then I pick Buildings. Let's show buildings because buildings are probably going to be an interesting thing. Um, and let's make it active, and then see what happens. So what I'm hoping this is going to do. Ah, <laughs> it's just going to make lots of things black. <laughs> yes, let's just make it all black. 
let's make the background transparent uh, and that really hasn't made anything any better has it yeah, maybe because well, I yeah there are definitely some buildings like maybe we need to zoom in a bit more to get to see but there's like in some of these schools and things that are being shown there are definitely things that look like buildings um, but maybe they're not maybe we need to go further in so maybe let's not show Bill let's look and see if there's anything else that's interesting that there'll be a few of that we can show um, Hmm, Amenities Poly. That sounds like it might be an interesting one. Still not showing anything. Oh, maybe it did. What was that? Yes, there we go. I don't know if you can see it, but this church... Yeah, has now got a little area drawn around it. Ah, yeah, and so does... Uh, is that... I'm trying to think I think that's Alder Hay. Yeah, that that's maybe the old Alder Hay site and this is the new Al uh, Alder Hay being the children's hospital here in Liverpool or maybe we need to come a bit further over. What's uh ah yeah okay so that's um Broad Green Hospital. Um so yeah, so amenities we can we can see, so the yeah, so those are the polygons for amenities. That's cool. Um, so, so maybe like as long as if I zoom out a little bit, do we still get to see them? Yep. I think they're still showing up, aren't they? Isn't it? Oh, let's wait until it loads. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what happens if we make them black instead? Oh, okay, so the black just makes the background black, and let's see, yeah, that's not particularly um, easy to view, is it? But, <clears throat> yeah, um, I think the transparent one's a little bit more useful. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of amenities that were showing up, and um, yeah, so... Let's maybe see if we can work out how to colour them in in a particular colour, um, and because that will, yeah, like that's going to be a good starting point. I think let's go with hospitals because we can see where they are, and and the next thing is to work out how to make them. Um, yeah, I am going to zoom back in just to make all the hay and uh, broad green a bit more visible and yeah we probably don't care about amenities points as if we turn those on though just have a look and see what happens oh right we get whole loads of things showing up yeah pharmacies so i think a bunch of, yeah most of these are probably pharmacies well, maybe not though, maybe not all of them. So there is, um, yeah, St Oswald's Parish Club, um, Old Swan Post Office. So yeah, there are a bunch of amenities points, but um, yeah, amenities. So these are the different. So um, OpenStreetMap can define a specific, you can put like just plot a point on the map and you can also draw areas um, so yeah those will be the different sorts of things that might be interesting if 
yeah, if amenities end up being points inside a building, I wonder if there's a way of, like, maybe the, yeah, pharmacies, for example, like, maybe that doesn't often show up as a building, it shows up as a, I guess we could find out if I actually just zoom in on, I'm intrigued that Iceland is listed as an amenity, but, um, but, you know, <clears throat> that's the joys of what people decide is the things that they care about. Um, and I can zoom in a bit further. And we do get to see... No, I think mostly these are um, buildings that they're showing up in. So they do still, and maybe just at a certain zoom level, it turns it into a point rather than a actual building so yeah Altuan post office is probably still just a point but that could be yeah I guess some of this is going to come down to what the um, uh, like what people have decided to to map um, and and whether they've done the building or the point so yeah it's interesting the amenities like the, this is the Tesco um, so Tesco is showing up as an amenity, um, which is kind of intriguing. Um, is Tesco an amenity? I mean, it's just a supermarket. It's just on, an amenity on some level, but uh, yeah, it feels to me like it would be re retail. So I guess those are going to be a bunch of um, things that there'll be a whole load of iterating through and you know, drawing this stuff and then kind of going, oh, what's that massive amenity there? Is there some big kind of you know leisure center? Oh, no, it's not. It's Tesco. Um, Right, now we need to work out how Tesco shows up and turn that so make sure that that's uh, retail and so on and so forth. So, given that we've got some amenities, the next thing to do is going to be to work out how we change the style. So, um, so there is a, yeah, get started with Carto CSS um, it's maybe going to be a useful thing so CSS looks like that and uh, tile set layers are the selectors okay so yeah we can do lots of tile sets that's fine um, so okay so you do things like water and then there's polygon fill which will be fill that polygon in and then that is um, very CSS like and it's a colour that's in RGB format kind of standard um, so you've got um, 7.3 seven, three hex of um, red and B6 of green and E6 of uh, blue uh, with the maximum being FF in each one, so the yeah, hexadecimal number between 0 and 255, 255 decimal, um, anyway, yeah, you get the idea. So, uh, right, so there's a bunch of things, and a lot of this is about using Mapbox, which is not what we're using, we're using Cosmetic, so Mapbox is a kind of commercial remember rightly Mapbox is a company that does um, works with lots of mapping stuff um, okay so we can pick different zoom levels that things happen at um, so that's kind of interesting um, and so you can then classify things so you can work out whether it's motorways and stuff so I guess that might be a way of us filtering the amenities if Tesco is showing up as an amenity we can probably end up with a bunch of things where we have like hash amenity class equals pharmacy is an amenity but not class equals supermarket or what have you um, okay we got variables that's going to be a useful thing I think um, so I think we should end up with a bunch of yeah, so let's make some notes while we're going here. <clears throat> so we've got these different. Let me just make that a bit bigger. So we've got these different land uses that we're interested in. 
um, and yeah, it'll um, expect. My typing is loads worse when I've got a unknown number of people watching me. Uh, it seems. Uh, right. What do I expect? Yeah, I expect it'll be useful. Use the Carto CSS variables to define the different land use colors. Um, and actually, let's just put a note in about um, Carto. So, uh, don't want to accidentally click a link. Uh, yeah, the so Cosmetic uses Carto CSS. to uh, describe how to render describe how to render maps um, and what's this is do, 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 do. Cartos here okay this yeah, <clears throat> so this manual is a uh, reasonably good. So let's just uh, the that box Carto CSS manual is a decent starting point. Find out more. So yeah, as with all of these sorts of things, it's useful for other people who want to come along and, and kind of join in the project later. But uh, also useful for me, as we've seen, um, like next time I'm doing some stuff on this, I've then got a bunch of links that I can go and, and read up on some more stuff. Um, because, so, we'll want something like uh, that water, um, maybe we'll just call them all land use land <laughs> yeah land use water is a great um, great variable name isn't it <laughs> um, what kind of land is that lake over there <laughs> um, but yes uh, yeah wonder if And maybe let's, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but hopefully we can put hyphens into variable names in Carto CSS. So that would be, um, actually, let's just copy theirs because theirs is a much nicer watercolor than, um, than I'm about to invent off the top of my head, which will be some really bright blue. Um, Land use, land use even, land use park, uh, yeah, parks, um, so that would be, yeah, this is going to be a terrible looking green, uh, but uh, maybe we'll just cheat and use 73E6B6. Let's just see what that looks like. That's going to be a kind of, yeah, palish green, maybe. I don't know. Um, land use. Land use, even. Amenities equals, uh, I don't know, E6. Um, we definitely need to go back and change, change these colors at some point. But that will give us an idea. Um, and if I yeah preview this, you'll see that it's looking a little bit nicer when it's uh, when it'll get posted as a comment. So we want to do something like that. Um, and focusing on amenities to begin with. So so I'm maybe just going to jump and 
do a bit of poking around um, and just see what so we've got a whole bunch of MSS um, files which my guess is that they are the Carto Carto styles I mean I guess let's have a a look at base.mms MSS even um, so yeah, this gives us general land use and land cover so as we saw a minute ago yeah when you get below certain zoom levels um, oh you see this has already got a bunch of variables like land um, so that's kind of interesting um, yeah which is I don't know what's going to be the best approach given that we've got this very detailed um, like style sheet and stuff already which is showing loads of stuff and maybe we don't want there to be loads of detail maybe we want there to be like not so much detail because you want to see um, yeah we're interested in land use so I wonder wonder what's going to make the most sense whether it's worth kind of starting from scratch and building things up um, and I mean, the other thing you might want to do is we might want a, like well maybe not such a hard boundary but have it be like when you're zoomed out and you can see more of an area I suppose ideally when you can see one one isochrone like so when your screen is full of one 15 minute city you'd see the different sort of amenity types um, quite strongly and then as you zoom in it would then kind of switch to a oh you want to see what the detail is here and let's show you the different you know specific streets and let you work out what's what um, that kind of might be nice uh, yeah we do seem to have a whole bunch of, of variables of different types um, like you know wooded and park and grass and yeah all sorts of different types um, <coughs> Yeah, okay. Um, natural glacier. Not so much of a problem in Liverpool, um, and sadly becoming less of a problem, well, not a problem as such, but you know, less of a useful feature to be showing in many parts of the world. Um, so yeah, like all the sand sort of stuff shows up as sand, and there's bare and natural scree and shit, so yeah. So Polygon Phil Hospital, oh, interesting, I wonder what the hospital um, variable is. Um, yeah, <coughs> actually that's maybe grep uh, at hospital. Um, do, do, do. Aha, palette.mss. Okay, so if we look in palette.mss, this is based on uh, some other tile mill stuff for OSM Bright. For basic style customization, you can simply edit the colors and fonts. Haha, -ha. right, okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Right, okay, it's, there we go, hospital. Hospital is grey, apparently. Is the hospital grey? They look a bit pink, but that's be probably because I've got them as an amenity. Okay, yeah, they are. They're a bit grey. So, um, let's just, out of curiosity, make the hospitals a bit pinker uh, 
um, I th think, oh, I don't know, what happens if we reload? Just going to regenerate the, the tiles. Um, well, it does seem to have made it all very grey. So it would be nice if that has worked out that the tiles have changed. Let me find... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So there was the reload thing happening. Creating... Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. <coughs> so, that seems to be... Creating a bunch of things and regenerating some XML. And... Seems very grey. Um, oh, and then just as yeah, so it's worked out where. Ah, oh, there we go. <coughs> course actually when I was saying these things grey we're nowhere near any hospitals at the moment let's go and scroll back um, and yes work out that the broad green is now broad pink green uh, yeah cool so so yeah we can change the, the mincy colours mmm Although that's not changing the buildings that they're shown on. I wonder if we zoom, as we zoom out, um, at what point we lose. Yeah, you see, there we go. We've lost a bunch of the buildings there. Um, and we've just got pink. And we've got pink now for um, for older, older hay as well. Mmm. Yeah, okay. That's cool. So maybe we could just yeah go through and have out lots of like stronger colours for for the different land uses. Um, but we have worked out. Uh, let's make some notes on what we were doing so far. Um, <coughs> yeah, the. Uh, Colors, yeah, colors used in cycle OSM are all defined in is it palette with a single? Yes, palette.mss. Uh, so yeah, we could just go and change loads of those colors to be to be a set that we want to pick pick a standard kind of set of a you know, smaller number of colours because there are obviously there are quite a lot of different colours here. Um, or maybe we just need to go and standardise so the yeah hospital and um, what are the other th other amenities. Maybe we can just go and define some new, like land use variables that we can tweak um, as a kind of core set, and have the palette variables pick up pick up those, um, so that we don't have to go and replace loads of different things in lots of places and because obviously the hospital variable will get used in loads of places and we could do search and replace for it but we might be better off just having kind of multiple layers of variable where we can just kind of go yeah hospitals they're all amenities um, and then at some point in the future we can decide actually no hospitals should get pulled out as a health section or something and we're going to you know and then we just make the hospital variable equal to the um, health land use type um, and then they'd all pick that up. 
Um, yeah, that's quite nice. That lets us. I guess it partly depends whether we want all of the all of this detail and um, color um, of, of things like the cycle networks to be visible still, uh, or whether we want to make them less visible. I guess we can just yeah in the future make all of those grey or something. Because uh, the idea with the fifteen minute city is that we'll you know we'll update the tile sets so that you can load the land use tile set and see what kind of land uses are in your um, fifteen minute isochrone. But you you'll be able to switch layers, so you'll be able to switch back to the cycle OSM layer so that you can see kind of okay that's great I've got an idea now of where the kind of places of to work and so on and so forth are but I want to see what the cycle infrastructure is like and then maybe there'd be yeah we could have the transport one as another option so you can see what the bus routes and trains are like and and also the default kind of like you know car centric um, perspective as well yeah so then then they'd just be different ones and then it's less important that there are all these different um, different types so yeah I guess I'm stuck in my usual like I've got this really nice map at the moment like do I just start modifying this one to make it give me some nice land uses or do I like start from scratch and and build up the land use stuff from from nothing um, where we start to show roads and and the like um, yeah, but they see it feels like there's going to be lots of detail and and nuance of like bridges and um, and yeah railways and all those sorts of things that actually and footpaths and yeah loads of stuff that it is going to be actually quite useful to just take an existing one and modify that. So so yeah, I think maybe we will stick with the um yeah the they exist stick with the existing style sheet and just modify it um so i'm gonna make yeah given given the amount of different types of data data etc to render makes more sense modify the cycle OSM styles than it does to start from scratch. Uh, so yeah, like basically this is me, you know, encoding my design decisions and things that I've been thinking about into the GitHub issue for future reference and reminding myself what I'm doing so that next time I don't agonize over all this again because it's like I've made a decision let's just run with it um, one thing that we should do though <clears throat> is work out how um, yeah like let's get to a point where we can modify oh well obviously we've seen we can modify some stuff um, we change the color of the hospitals um, but I'm pretty sure at the moment, um, actually, I'm going to set that back to how it was. Um, and okay, this is good. So we have got a um, yeah, like this is all been pulled out of with uh, Git. <clears throat> so this isn't just a copy of stuff. This is a Git repository, which means that I can do things like this, where I can see the status and see what's changed, and remind myself what um, what what diff there is. Okay, yeah, this was me tweaking some of the stuff to get it to work whilst I was getting Cosmetic up and running. Uh, but yeah, this is um, this is a Git clone of the Cycle OSM repository which is not going to be like it's useful in some ways and that I can see what's changed so I can actually go back in and 
and change the hospital to make it um, to make it pink. Um, and now, if I do get status, you can see that palette.mss has changed, and I can do git diff palette.mss, and it shows me that it used to be eo eo eo. Um, it's like sort of some sort of uh, yeah. Anyway, let's not try and think about nursery rhymes um, <laughs> and and farms, uh, and um, uh, yeah. And I've changed it so it's. F0, B0, B0, um, instead of E0, 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 which is some kind of grey. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> so this will show me what the changes are, but I can't store them anywhere because I'm not going to have the rights to push stuff back to the Cyclo SM style, and for good reason, because they do not want <laughs> me to make all of the hospitals strange colours and in pull in lots of weird land use um, styles so yeah I should really have well I guess I was experimenting with some stuff but this now before I start making lots of changes is a good point to work out um, quite where I'm going to store all this information in the long term so that we can start to build up um, a land use style sheet um, so uh but we're going to base it on Cyclo SM, so so that's yeah, that's all good. So maybe what I will do is uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> I can't remember how many steps there were to get this repository to do something useful. Uh, is one of my concerns. But yeah, maybe we should run through that now. Um, there should be the right information in that GitHub issue to tell you to say what I did. So I can go and recreate things. I can leave the cycle OSM Carto CSS style um, repository there. So I've got it for reference, and I can always go back to it. Um, but what I will do is go and find that cycle OSM Carto GSS repository, and I will fork it into the Liverpool one, and so we can then change that but use it as a starting point. Uh, here we go. Using Cyclosm as a starting point. So, let me open that in a new tab. So here is the repository that we have been doing stuff with and you know, still quite active. Something was happening on it five days ago, which is nice. And so, I am, actually just out of curiosity, let's see what the other 12 forks are. Um, and those mostly just seem to be, yeah, people, well, nobody's reading, oh, there's a gravel one, I wonder if that's out of interest, let's see what, see what that is. <coughs> so, here we go, attempt at creating map layer showing roads suitable for gravel riding. Right, so kind of mountain bikey sort of stuff. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> so yeah, I think we will have a similar section um, uh, in the in the top of ours. So yeah, there we go. Uh, right, we are on Cyclo SM, Cyclo SM, Carto CSS style. So let's fork that, and we will fork it into Liverpool UK. <clears throat> so this is setting up a new GitHub repository in Liverpool UK, as you can see. You can see that it, where it was forked from, so you can trace its history back. Um, and how do I? Uh, can I edit the settings? Is that gonna? Yeah. So let's let's make the website 15minutecity.mcqn.com. Um, and. Uh, land use um, yeah there's probably a better geographic term for what I'm doing but we'll call it land use uh, Carto CSS style so we'll save those changes so now it's going to show up over there like that um, ok 
can I rename the just general repository because cycle osm carto css style is not useful here we go land use uh, so <clears throat> so that should make it a bit clearer as to what we're going to do and our next step is going to be to clone it uh, and let's go up here uh, git clone yes that's fine and of course we then hit the problem that I don't have a public key set up for this server uh, but given that we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff for that um, yes let's go and set up uh, public keys so doo -doo -doo. this is and actually yeah given that I can't quite remember um, how um, yeah how secret any of this sort of stuff is I'm going to switch switch views so that you don't all get so I don't accidentally share loads of really super secret information with all and sundry um, but yes I'm going into my github account <coughs> uh, to my SSH keys and there is a guide to generating SSH keys um, so do, 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 do. yeah generating Actually, have I got any SSH? It's possible that there is some SSH keys in at the moment. Um, no, there is, it hasn't got any SSH keys at the minute. So, let's do that to create an SSH key. Um, and we'll go with the default size, <coughs> and then um, I shall. What? And for some reason, I don't have access to create my own SSH key. Why is that not a thing? Um, So yeah, for some reason root seems to own my um, SSH folder, which I'm pretty sure it shouldn't do. Let me just double check. Um, and do, do, do. yeah, generally the deployer user should own its own. Um, so, See if I can create my own SSH key. Yes, there we go. We have created an SSH key. Right, okay. So. And 
over to the SSH agent. And then add it to my GitHub account. <clears throat> Luckily, this is the sort of thing you only do once for each machine. You want to be able to do any Git related things. Um, so, SSH keys, new SSH key, um, 15 minute city, and then. Get the public key and copy that, paste that into there. Okay, so I have created an SSH key. Um, let me Go back to the land use counter CSM um, and final step. Let me welcome you back um, and let's see where are we? We're here. I'm going to get clone. Yes, it's fine to talk to GitHub. Right, there we go, we have pulled down lots of stuff, so now we have a land use cart of CSS style. And let's just double check that we can do stuff with it. Um, let's edit the readme and land use cart CSS. Uh, let's And we like, yeah, we'll just put a basic description in here. Uh, this is a Carto CSS styles style <coughs> um, to emphasize different land use types. Um, it is being developed to explore the 15, not 155 minute city, that would be a much bigger city I imagine, 15 minute city ideas uh, as detailed um, Detailed here. Detailed here is a terrible um, link text, uh, but uh, we can link straight to that issue. Um, it is derived from the excellent Cycle OSM map style. Um, yeah, let's make Cyclo SM um, map style. Um, we'll just delete that for now. Average open stream map. All status demonstration, blah 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 blah. <coughs> so, uh, where is there? We go. This, this is the Cyclo SM one. Let's get a link to that. Stick that in there. So, that's not really a very good description, but it's a good start and at least shows that this isn't the Cyclo SM stuff. Um, as we can see, the readme has changed, so I can uh, also see what the difference is, and we can see we've added that bit of information. 
Um, and so the next thing to do is to commit that. At which point we find some other need to be done for one time, one time only. Um, config global user dot email. And this is mostly going to be me doing things, so we'll stick my email address in and get config global user dot name. Um, yeah, yeah, let's not worry too much about this. And so now we can commit that. Ah, good old nano. Need to change that to Vim at some point. Uh, anyway, so what did we change? Um, tweet the README, make it um, to show show that this is no longer uh, cycling focused style sheet. push and that's pushing some stuff up and I sent it kind of surprised it didn't ask me for my password but but there we go did it start anyway so now we have if I load in here we can see Liverpool car to USM it starts off it says it's cycle OSM if I reload that it says it's land use land use car to CSS there we go Okay, <clears throat> so we've got a quarter of an hour left, which is probably just about going to be enough time to get um, uh, the um, yeah get back to where we started, <laughs> but with a um, style sheet that we can actually do some changes to and commit changes and track what we're doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so what did we do? Um, so we have forked that to into to uh, land use Carter CSS style. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now what we want to do is go into the Carter. We're in the land use Carter CSS style. I think we want to do the NVM install thing again. Uh, just to make sure that we use set up the correct version of node for this to run from um, and let's go back and work out what we did to get this up and running so Postgres and all of the install things will all be installed already um, and I guess loads of this will all be in the Postgres database, which we will just use the same one. Um, so this Cosmetic. So install the NVM, blah, 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 NVM install that. So it's installed globally. So those are a bunch of um yeah those are a bunch of installation things so maybe um yeah we can do a bunch of the shape files okay so i think we'll need to get the shape files because we had changed project.mml hadn't we so so this is our land use terminal and this one at the top is still our cycling one so let's stop running that we'll then get a billion error messages on because the SSH tunnel no longer exists or the SSH tunnel still exists but there isn't a server running with it so let's just for the short time um, how do we Let's yeah, let's let's just close that tab for now. 
it would be the quickest way to stop it from complaining at us all the time because Cosmetic isn't running anymore. Uh, Git status. So what's changed? Palette.mss and project.mml. So if we go into our land use one, we could just diff the Cyclonism Carter style palette.mss and palette.mss we've got here. The only difference is the hospital stuff. There haven't been any changes in the last couple of months since I um, like first cloned that stuff. So let's um, copy that across so that we might as well start with where we got up to. Um, and again, we'll similarly diff the project.mml and the project.mml we've got here. And lots of stuff has changed. Um, interesting. Yeah, but loads of this is stuff that we and we don't. Yeah, we haven't changed and we don't do stuff with. So that's obviously changed quite a lot since I'd last cloned. Uh, you know, last pulled the the proper version on the thing. So the last couple of months they've been doing quite a lot of stuff. So what we can do instead is go into the project. MMS. Uh, we might want to. Wonder if we change that. SM. Land use oriented Carto CSS style. Um, yeah, we should maybe. Ah, center zero zero and zoom level of four. So I wonder while we're here, um, let's get it to start and center it on Liverpool. So we do, 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 zipping down here. We've got. Uh, let me let me edit that just so it's easier to cut and paste things. And let's start with a center being this, which. and a zoom level of 13 so hopefully that will let it just automatically load and rather than us getting to see you know things off the coast of Africa at Null Island um, we'll get to see um, a bunch of other things well we'll get to see Liverpool so we won't have to do that whole like intermediate zooming kind of stuff um, so let's let's see what else Get status. What else has changed? There's a bunch of PDF PBF files, which are the um, OpenStreetMap data sets, and the LAN polygons. That's just the all the countries in the world, so that at least when you're zoomed out and looking at the coast of Africa, you can see something. Um, not sure quite where that what that PBF file is. Moses had latest. And then there's some land polygons, yeah, which I think we used as the different stuff. So let's see. We might need to copy some of that stuff across into the land use one. But if we look at what has changed in project.mml, then basically, yeah, it was just a couple of things in the data source. So if we then search for data source, We'll find, yes, the land low data source, <coughs> and that was that file, and that's been commented out. And instead, we have file simplified land polygons. So, simplified land polygons. So, that's, yeah, instead of pulling stuff from um, uh, an OpenStreetMap server, it's just pulling it from a local file. So those will be the files, we'll need to copy those across as well. Um, simplified lang polygons and then similarly on the land high we've got the, another land polygons one. So if you find the next data source, land high, yep. Um, so let's comment that one out. And that will go with a local one. So 
So now if we do git diff project ml, we get those extra bits that we've done at the top, but then we also get the yeah, same sort of difference. <coughs> um, uh, yeah. And polygon split 3857 folder, which has some stuff in it. So we all want to do copy recursively cyclo sm land use polygon split 3857 to here. Um, and the other one's a simplified CP minus R. Cyclo SM simplified land polygons complete to here. And we've now got yeah, simplified land polygons which has got a bunch of things in it and land polygons which has also got a bunch of things in it. So maybe let's cancel that. Um yeah. Do do do, do update the project, blah blah blah. And yeah, maybe we can because we'll have done that's just pushing stuff into Postgres. So uh, yeah, we might be able to just get away with running Cosmetic to serve our um, new land use. Totally should have made the hospitals a much more kind of super obvious colour so that it would um it would be more obvious that um <coughs> that we had yeah that we'd got it to work. Um and now that we're running that and that let's go into the land use thing so we can do playing around with the land use one. Um actually what I might do is Go back into the Cyclo SM1. Uh, that's not super obvious, is it? But touch. Um, <coughs> do not use this uh, folder. Move to the Uh, land use carto move to land, uh, land use carto CSS style instead. <coughs> uh, what to do LS now? I uh, see that's got way off up there. Um, yeah, so let's make that. Uh, we need that to show up at the end, so uh, do not use. Uh, do, 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 do. Just because I'm likely to come into here and then just do an ls to see where things are, and so just having a file that reminds me that I should not be in here and I should <laughs> move somewhere else is kind of a useful thing. So if I move that to zz underscore. Then when I do ls, it says do not move this folder. So that might remind me that I need to do going into here instead. So there we go. And what I am going to do is go into the palette and I'm going to find the hospital. And I'm actually not going to make it red. I'm going to make it super green instead. And ah yes, yeah, see there we go. We got a bunch of things that tell us that the palette.mss has changed on disk. So hopefully now, if we open a new, uh, here just go to localhost six seven eight nine, wasn't it? And I'm not going to jump straight to things. So I'm hoping that this is going to render me in just the right place. It does seem to have got zoom level of 13. So it seems to have picked up and it's got the Latin long the wrong way around. <laughs> so God knows where we are. Uh, minus 2.9, is that gonna be, yeah, somewhere in the 
um, in the in the uh, Atlantic. And I'm going to, have to probably zoom out quite a bit to get to a point where um, it's it's doing stuff. Uh, so whilst it's thinking about rendering things, I'm going to go into the project MML and find the lat long that it was picking and swap them around so that next time it runs um, hopefully it will load us in somewhere useful and yeah actually I'm not going to care about that I'm going to close that for a minute I'm going to kill that and start it again um, because otherwise it's going to spend forever generating map tiles for god knows where that we do not care about um, <clears throat> and yeah okay so let's open that and then go to localhost 6789 which I think is now putting us in Liverpool <laughs> um, Yes, there we go. Like detailed stuff, we're getting Liverpool. And I suppose the final thing will be to go and find. Yeah, I think I can see them already. Uh, but if I drag that across a bit and zoom in a couple of times and drag that back down, uh, then when it finishes loading. Then, but yeah, like yeah, I that that's broad green. Yeah, we're getting the pluses because it's hospital, so the hospital is green. Um, so that shows that yeah, we haven't just accidentally run the cycle OSM one that we were playing with earlier. We're definitely in the land use one. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, that's good. We have um, we have got. I think I might change it back to be pink actually because green looks far too much like um, far too much like it's what you call it um, grass, parks, things like that uh, so um, I don't know if that will load automatically because I've changed stuff because it knows that, uh, that that has changed. Oh yeah, so it does seem to be automatically regenerating. Yeah, nice. That's cool. <clears throat> uh, and we have pink hospitals now. So that seems like a good place to stop things. Um, let's just go back in and edit this yet again uh, because we now want to go to to land use. I think it's land use. Yes, land use. Land use Cartos Carto CSS style, <coughs> um, and we don't need to worry about jumping straight to to there. Um, but we might want to say open. HTTP localhost 6789 in a browser. Um, so yeah, so that's now going to take us next time I find this comment. <coughs> um, it will, yeah, it will point me at the right place. Um, so let's just comment to see where we got up to. So we fought that into Andrew's country. Uh, and um, set things up on the server to allow us to render and and show that um, yeah tile set. Now we can, <coughs> yeah, well, next I suppose, next we'll be able to start 
making proper change, you know, serious changes to the Carto CSS. Um, to uh, start designing our map. Um, and yeah, like, I don't know if we should be like continuing to do stuff in this issue or whether we should jump across and have a time, like, I'm probably going to keep things in this set of issues at the moment rather than create issues over on the land use. Um, Carto CSS repository just to save spreading things out too much um, but we have got a place to um, yeah and yeah cloned it and set things up on the server to allow us to render and show that tile set so next we can make serious changes so there we go I think that's probably us for the day. Um, yeah, we have we have some new tiles, and uh, yeah, now we can now we can start to play around with some tile sets and and check in the changes and keep track of what we change so we can undo things in the future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, yeah, and that's two hours up. So um, I guess should just change back to that to to say goodbye um so yeah thank you for thank you for watching um now i'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe and all that kind of thing um but yeah uh yeah let me know if you've got any questions or comments and hopefully see you in the next live coding session so uh take care